Hello and welcome to this worship service. My name is Carmen Little and I am a lay leader with the Chetwin Shared Ministry. It is my pleasure to be able to worship with you today. Our call to worship. Lord, we come before you in joy, clothed in the majesty of your glory. We come to sing your praises. Like the countless faithful of old, we proclaim the Lamb to be worthy of blessing, honor, and glory. We fall down before you in worship. Amen. Our opening prayer. Compassionate, glorious God, you hear our cries and our pleas for help. We may enter the dark of night with weeping, but we wake in the morning with joy, for you hear our petitions and come in our hour of need. As we gather here in the name of your Son, be with us as we pray, and give us the joy of knowing and serving you in all that we say, think, and do. Amen. Imagine a breakfast of fresh grilled fish and warm bread on the beach after pulling an all-nighter at work. The sun is rising, you're surrounded by your closest friends, and your host is none other than the newly risen Savior. John chapter 21 verses 1 through 14. After these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples by the Sea of Tiberias, and he showed himself in this way. Gathered there together were Simon Peter, Thomas called the twin, Nathanael of Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two others of his disciples. Simon Peter said to them, I am going fishing. They said to him, We will go with you. They went out, got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Just after daybreak, Jesus stood on the beach, but the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to them, Children, you have no fish, have you? They answered him, No. He said to them, Cast the net to the right side of the boat, and you will find some. So they cast it, and now they were not able to haul it in because there were so many fish. That disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on some clothes, for he was naked, and jumped into the sea. But the other disciples came in the boat, dragging the net full of fish, for they were not far from the land only about a hundred meters off. When they had gone ashore, they saw a charcoal fire there with fish on it and bread. Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish that you have just caught. So Simon Peter went aboard and hauled the net ashore full of large fish, a hundred and fifty-three of them. And though there were so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, Come and have breakfast. Now none of the disciples dared to ask him, Who are you? because they knew it was the Lord. Jesus came and took the bread and gave it to them and did the same with the fish. This was now the third time that Jesus appeared to the disciples after he was raised from the dead. Breakfast, the most simple meal of the day for many of us, void of fancy silverware and linen napkins, is often shared with people who see you in your pajamas, your hair in disarray, before you shower, but they love you anyway. It's into this most intimate setting that Jesus invited his friends that morning. As they were toiling in their nets, Jesus was waiting for them, cooking their breakfast. And when they drew close to shore, Jesus invited them to come and eat breakfast with him. The conversations that followed that meal brought healing, life, and joy to those disciples' wounded hearts, especially Peter, who had denied Jesus three times. John 21, 15 through 17. When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my lambs. A second time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Tend my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter felt hurt because he said to him the third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. And thankfully, that breakfast invitation is issued to each of us. If anyone understands our pain, it's Jesus, physical, emotional, and relational. Yes, Jesus experienced it all, and he did it out of love for us, 
When we're hurting, Jesus doesn't send us away to get our act together. He invites us to find mercy and grace as we draw close to him. His disciples had followed him for three years or so now, walked with him, ate with him, traveled with him. But everything had changed so suddenly. It had been a confusing time, to be sure. Jesus had ridden into Jerusalem like a gentle king, peacefully conquering. He taught in the temple and been opposed by Israel's religious leaders. Then there was the Last Supper when he told them that he'd been betrayed. Then the crucifixion. Everything changed so suddenly. But then there was the empty tomb and everything changed again. Put yourself in the shoes of the disciples and imagine the emotions they must be experiencing. They're emotionally and physically exhausted. They've already encountered the resurrected Jesus twice, who, after somehow walking through walls, comforted them by saying, Peace be with you. He also gave them a vision for their next steps in life. Just as the Father has sent me, so I am sending you. They were certain Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and has risen from the dead, but they're not certain what to do next. How many times have you gotten to the point of not knowing what to do next? We create so much unnecessary baggage in our lives. We plan, we implement, we work hard, and we get frustrated when nothing comes of it. Desperate and empty, we finally look to Jesus. Jesus who is asking that we come and join him and take part in what he's prepared and created. Come and have breakfast. So just as the disciples so many years ago needed their souls and bodies refreshed, so do we need our souls and bodies refreshed. We need true rest. That may include something very tangible, like enjoying a wonderful meal with friends or withdrawing from activity in quiet and solitude. God cares about nourishing his children, both spiritually and physically. Jesus knew that what the disciples needed most at that moment was simply to eat. Come and have breakfast. Breakfast with all the fellowship that that word evokes. Fellowship is one of the most important things God wants from us. He wants us to come to know him, to be with him, to spend time with him. And Jesus showed his disciples the importance of fellowship, the importance of quiet moments to listen to him for comfort and direction in our lives. We can become so busy in our lives that we neglect to spend time with God and to meet others in fellowship with God. Breakfast, with all its nourishment and life-giving nutrition, is your spiritual diet nourishing and full of life-giving nutrition? What does your spiritual pyramid look like? At the base of the pyramid should be time spent with God in prayer and reading God's word. These two actions should be inseparable because both reinforce each other. As we pray, we draw closer to God. As we draw closer to God, we desire to learn even more about him through his word. The next level should be fellowship. The final level is serving with the gifts the Holy Spirit has bestowed upon us. All of this begins and ends with Jesus. He is the only source of our sustenance, our very food and bread which we should take daily or the rest of our life will be out of balance. Breakfast with its celebration of the new day, another day that the Lord has given us to glorify him in the eyes of those who need to know him. Breakfast with its reminder that we who believe have been made people of the day and of the light. Matthew 5, 14 to 16. You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hid. No one after lighting a lamp puts it under the bushel basket, but on the lampstand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. We are to be people who radiate the light of God's love and truth into the lives of those whom we meet. While Jesus was on earth, he was the light of the world. But we have been made his representatives and have been entrusted with the message of the gospel of grace, the ministry of reconciliation. We have been empowered by the indwelling Holy Spirit to shine forth truth. Breakfast with its new glimpse of the God in heaven, its new challenge to walk before him in purity, and its promise of his abiding presence.
presence. Come and have breakfast. Our Lord longs to meet us at the fire to talk about important things, to set our hearts right. Our Lord longs to meet with us in prayer to talk about the important things, to set our hearts right. Through prayer, we have access to deep encounters with the heart and mind of our Heavenly Father. Jeremiah 33, 3 says, Call to me and I will answer you and will tell you great and hidden things that you have not known. God longs for us to call to him as our source of life, wisdom, guidance, and truth. He longs to answer our calls by shepherding us into a lifestyle of continually seeking and receiving revelation from his word and spirit. Mother Teresa said, prayer is not asking. Prayer is putting oneself in the hands of God at his disposition and listening to his voice in the depth of our hearts. You can truly put yourself in the hands of your Heavenly Father and listen to His voice as Mother Teresa did. Your Creator longs to open your eyes and heart to receive the knowledge of His love, will, and divine nature. Taking time to listen to God in prayer is at the very core of Christian spirituality. Prayer is patience, repetition, and faith. You can hear God because He wants to talk to you. Psalm 46.10 tells us, Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. In stillness, we grow in our knowledge of who God truly is. God longs to make us a people who know him the way you know your family and friends. He longs to make us a people who live, think, and work because of true encounters with him. May you seek and find the knowledge of your Heavenly Father as you enter into the quiet place. Quiet your heart and listen to him in guided prayer. Come, warm yourself by his fire. Rest your tired head upon him. Let him give you new life. Now let us, God's people, pray. Risen Christ, Lord of the way, you constantly wait for us to return to your shore to be fed, loved, and energized to follow you. Turn the tide to pull us in from drifting on the shallow sea of earthly wants to set our sails toward you. Jesus, Son of God, our help and our direction. Risen Christ, Lord of the way, remove the scales of unhampered power and personal glory from all who navigate the halls of governments, globally and locally, that obscure the eternal rewards of positive stewardship for your people and your earth. Jesus, Son of God, our help and our direction. Risen Christ, Lord of the way, grant hope and healing for all in physical or emotional pain and lift the hearts of all who give them care. Risen Christ, Lord of the way, release the grief of those who weep in the night to let the morning bring the joy that our faithful beloved now live again in your eternal kingdom. Jesus, Son of God, our help and our direction. Christ Jesus, most worthy Lamb of God, you transformed the resistance of Paul and the reluctance of Ananias into instruments of faith and trust to bring your presence into this world. Restore our inner vision of you in this life for the next, converting us from complacency to your love in action. We ask through the faithfulness of the Holy Spirit and the power of the Almighty, who together with you reign as one God, now and forever. Amen.